Hello and welcome to Tuesday Business News Report. It's now time to bring a feature on the show today as we focus on the state of the economy. The value of manufactured goods imported into the country exceeded exports by 4.37 trillion naira in the second quarter of this year. That's according to figures from the National Bureau of Statistics. The NBS also stated that the value of manufactured goods trade in the second quarter of this year stood at 4.51 trillion naira, representing 37.5% of total trade and out of this the export component accounted for 211.67 billion naira while the input component was valued at well over 4.3 trillion naira well joining me now to discuss this and much more virtually i have economist marco Ilo. good to have you on the breakfast show this morning uh thank you david for having me good morning now the ratio of import versus export is quite a uh, uh, mm -hmm situation that we have on ground that's disturbing to say the least because this also largely affects the naira stability we are not necessarily putting our best foot forward and it's also questions whether or not we have very sound economic recovery or any economic agenda at all so to speak because you look at the like of other developing nations and this ratio is not as heightened as we have here in nigeria the disparity between imports and exports your thoughts well, uh, I think, uh, like just as you have said, uh, it is not something that is a good pill to swallow. But uh, I want to believe that government uh, is looking at the data too. And uh, as long as you think of uh, Nigeria being the focus of your policies and Nigerian and their welfare, uh, government has a duty to make sure that the, the trends are reversed. If we are talking about the, the value of the Naira, that is the outcome. The in, input into it will be the manufacturing, the jobs creation, the exports, and the likes. So if we are not doing enough with our economy, what comes out is the fact that we have to be importing. And we are only able to import too, only because we have something to export. Uh, maybe the crude oil that is still in demand. Uh, manufactured goods, not so much. So we have a long way to go, but I want to believe that government uh, will take the time to look at the facts and do something about it going forward. Mm. And talking about looking at incentives to also ensure that we have improved manufacturing base, our power infrastructure still remains the same. We're not necessarily seeing new incentives or waivers come in with the Finance Act. We also have a, a gradual recovery process and we don't necessarily also have the raw materials to support the manufacturing sector. Hence, we cannot say we are going to even have any better foot being placed forward by the next quarter. How disturbing is this for you as well, within the regards to research as well, working with big data and also uh, developing more hubs that would ensure that we have better resource management for our manufacturing sector, be it in fashion, be it in uh, agri-products, be it in whatever service it may be in. But what are the elements you think are fundamentally wrong and we need to start tweaking ahead of 2022 we've largely lost this year and the efcfta2 also is waiting for us as the giant of africa i think the whole idea is to dissemble the things that we are supposed to be looking at if if you are talking manufacturing you are looking at inputs you are looking at uh, labor you are looking at the supply chain you are looking at domestic demands so for example if you take agriculture if if you look at the figures, we we are importing wheat. I think it's, it's the second uh, largest uh, item on our import bill. These are things that we have the climate to grow. So whatever it is that is to produce less than 2-3% of our annual demand of wheat in the country, we have to look at it and, and fight it frontally. Uh, government has to look at that. The, the north is there, the land is there, the arable, arable land is there as it were. But if there is no uh, security, which has been the bane of, of our existence in the last couple of years, then we are going to be having this drop and drop and drop in uh, whatever it is that we are going to uh, uh, meeting up with locally and importing as it were. So if government needs to focus on security, focus on those other inputs that go into the manufacturing sector, focus on power. Uh, FCTA was, uh, came into existence, I think, uh, since about uh, 2018, but Nigeria signed up uh, on it uh, very much late. 
even at that, we are not still, in my opinion, ready to take on the world. The FCTA is there. It's an opportunity. It's an avenue for us to showcase what we have. But as far as from where I'm sitting, I think uh, policies are the biggest issues we are having. If we can focus on the policies and government can uh, look at these things holistically with a high on sincerity, we, uh, yeah. it's never too late for us to, maybe maybe not in the short term, but in the medium to long term, uh, compete effectively, change the fortunes of the country, and uh, before you know it, it will be the happy effort because employment will be created in, in the interim. Yeah. And also looking at the NPS data, we also see movement towards Ghana and Cameroon. This also raises eyebrows as to whether or not we have a sense of the phenomenon going on at this point in time within the regards of value addition and also standardization. And then within the value chain, also creating more jobs, like you've made mention of. How now do you think we, the how is what I'm emphasizing on. Do you think we have to look at value addition and also standardization from the Ministry of Trade and Investment to uh, steel development and mines and steel development and other uh, ministry or government strata that are involved aggressively in ensuring that we have investment promotion and trade? To what extent do you think we have to now push more aggressively the agenda of value addition and also standardization to ensure that we have the best products being produced locally, consumed locally, and then also exported? Well, uh, this thing is, um, is holistic. You cannot look at it from one side and leave the, the other side out. For example, investors coming into the country, the first port of call will be at the airport for most of them. And when they get to the airport, they begin to size up the country. If if they are not uh, happy with what they have, somebody was saying something like maybe a, a white a white man and the investor came into the country some some months back and uh, he was staying in one of the hotels. Then in the middle of the night, TFCC came calling looking for frosters and the way they treated the people who were staying at that hotel. The man, no, the, the man. To make sure that okay they look at all the things that have to do with manufacturing the things that have to do with productivity everything that has to do with with productivity of the country you know when you look at all those issues okay what do we do what are we doing in this particular aspect what are we doing in that particular aspect you know uh, for domestic uh, consumption and that you mentioned we can produce to consume locally i give you the issue of gas we produce gas with an higher export is whatever is remaining that we think of as local consumption. That should not be the case. If we have this thing that can spur our national growth, that can spur us towards industrial development, uh, we should give priority status mm. to, to local consumption of those things. So we have a long way to go, but I'm sure the government has, uh, has, has the things that it needs to do, the tools needed to, to get it in the right direction going forward. And wrapping up our conversation now, how do you also see things panning out with this particular report? Do you see it improving uh, any sort of investor sentiment and your forecast for the third quarter and lastly the fourth quarter of this year? How do you think things will play out and the interface with the investment uh, community? Well, um, uh, we are all looking at the numbers. I think uh, maybe in the short term, maybe not much because uh, of access to foreign exchange and the rest of it. You know, the world is a global village now. If you do a policy that is not uh, in the interest of business, the average businessman will look for alternatives. And the alternatives will not be something that uh, favors the government and its policy. So the government has a duty to make sure that call, call the manufacturing sector together, call the financial sector together. How can we do this? How can we put us together? And, and Because at the end of the day, we are all in the same, uh, on the same team. Nigeria is our team, and uh, there is no other thing we do. We, whether we are on the part of government or private sector, if it works, it works for everybody. If it doesn't work, we are all the worse off for it. Mm. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning. Michael Eloy, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, and then we hope that we see improvement in government policies from forex access to much more infrastructure to ensure that we have the manufacturing sector much more well-positioned to set the role it's all to play in the economy. Thank you once again.